Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. Food fam, this is the Walk and Talk podcast, the number one food podcast on Apple Podcast Charts. Uh, and I'm your host, Carl Fiorini. We're podcasting on site at Ibis Images Studios, where food photography comes alive. Um, on the menu today, so it's National Hispanic Heritage Month, and uh, and I know Chef Jeffrey cooked up some delicioso dishes today. Um, thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's production. Um, I, I can't wait to get into this uh, this chuck steak, uh, ropa vieja, and the empanadas. Oh, oh, Dios mío. Our dear friend and colleague, uh, Patrick Kelly from the... Uh, produce industry podcast also joins us on the show today um and i I just want to get into this uh jefferson starship (laughs) the jeffy jeff chef jeffrey uh why don't you jump into pre-shift and explain today's uh dishes to the audience go so we have four dishes one was thrown in there from a couple of weeks ago, but we wanted to do something special. We did a lamb porterhouse that I wanted to pay a little homage to the cuisine of the subcontinent of India. So we did tikka masala and that had a rice cake that was infused with fennel Greek. And then we had some green peppers on there and John did an exceptional job. I can't wait for everyone to see these pictures because it's just drop dead gorgeous. And then we shifted gears when we moved over to Latin America, Hispanic Heritage Month. So we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, I have to be different. So pork tenderloin is one of the dishes I wanted to look into, but I cut them like they were actually like beef fillets. And then we did that on top of a rice cake that was infused with um, mojo seasoning. Made the mojo from scratch. We actually marinated the pork before, seared that, did a pink I don't know if anybody's seen these pink Dominican beans that were absolutely phenomenal. They puff up as you cook them. So the texture or the, the, the mouthfeel is more meaty, if you want to call it that, than black beans and just your regular red bean. Where are they from? Dominican. Okay. So it's just, I fell in love with them a couple of years ago and it just, they're like speckled before you, if you look at them dried, they're speckled with pink and then red dots on them. And they're just gorgeous. The flavor profile is just spot on too. And then the last dish, I um, wanted to get it with the chuck steak. Great, because everybody knows chuck for one thing, and that's burgers. But there's so many things you can do. Pot roast is one of the things that, you know, you go to the supermarket, that's the best thing to use for it. This one, I, I kind of did a sear. And then instead of just searing and then braising, I actually used a pressure cooker. And within 45 minutes, 55 minutes, I was done with the whole meal. I used dry-aged sherry to kick it up a notch. I need little carrots and red peppers. I char the red peppers, put that in there, built the layers through that way. And then instead of doing like rice and beans, which is normal for that cuisine, I did a mashed yunka, similar to what Dominicans do. It's called mango. Mango is olive oil, salt, garlic, and they mash the thing together, almost like mafungo from the Puerto Rican. But this one, I actually played with it more of a, I'm moving my hands like everybody can see me. This one, I did more like a mashed potato, but I, then I infused it with some like lemon and, and lime zest and orange zest to give it some of that citrus that people look for. And then we made a red pepper coulis as the sauce on top of that. And we used some broccoli rob to bring some green to it. So John captured that beautifully. And then this is the first for me. I've never really played around with um, empanada shells from Puerto Rico. I love them because a little bit thinner. They baked up phenomenally. Um, so it had a, like an aeration in it to it as wait, well. Wait, wait, wait. I need you to understand something. <laughs> the empanadas were fire, dude. They Thanks. were amazing. 
And it, what's amazing is it's, it's exactly what we put on the plate for the main entree. Listen, people, I know you're listening to this and you're like, oh man, I wish I was having empanadas. They were freaking delicious, delicioso. Forgive yeah. me for the interruption, but it, no, it needed to be, that. there needed to be an exclamation point on this well, and, and people need to know. Uh, gracias. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> funny story about the, now that I'll tell you in a, in a minute, but, uh, that when I actually put a little bit of cheese in there and I know that's not really atypical for the Latin cuisine to have empanadas unless it's going to be like guava and cheese and stuff like that. But I wanted to give something a little bit more creaminess to it too, to as a filler and to add to the flavor profile of the, the, you know, ropa vieja. And then we served that with the roasted red pepper and we tried that that way. That was just, like you said, it was unbelievable. I am going to tell you that um, I'm a little bit, at first I wasn't really on board with your Ropa Vieja concoction, right? I was like, man, this can't be, this can't be good. You know, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. You know, my wife's Cuban, like we, we eat this stuff. Right. Home. Authentic, right? Uh, muy authentic. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So I'm, I'm like, oh man. I don't want to have to tell Jeff this sucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> but at the end of the, but let me tell you something. You put that, you know, you gave me that little spoon taster and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> it was really good. So well, I appreciate that. I'm, you know, I'm saving up for the day that I can tell you to get the hell out because it's terrible, but it hasn't happened yet. Well, like, thank God. Yeah. It's one of those things like Keith and I talk, Keith Harris and I talk about, you know, he's been 16 years studying it. I, I wrote an article that John's going to put out on our um, blog page and it's about the, the cuisine of Florida. Florida doesn't have, to me, does not have a definitive uh, cuisine type. Like if I were to say to you, cheesesteak, what city is known for cheesesteak? Uh, Philly. Right. We're not really known. Everybody will like key lime pie. Well, no, technically there's no key limes grown commercially here in Florida anymore. Listen, we're known for, uh, have they drugs. Say, <laughs> drugs and, uh, face eating zombies, <laughs> bath soaps. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. And, and I-95, you right. know, the worst part of it. You know what I mean? But for me growing up as a you know kid, I never, I always heard people that lived in New York and how they had, um, well, I was born in, I'm from the Bronx. I'm from, you know, me, when I traveled, I'm like, yeah, I'm from Florida. It was like one of those things I was kind of embarrassed for being born and grown up here, but I, now I kind of embrace it because the melting pot that has been created from the influx of the immigrants, it's for me, it's I fabulous. I, okay. So I, I, I embrace that and I, I concur, sir. Um, but I want to go further where I embrace Florida. I lo- I'm all about that Florida man. You know, like that whole perception. Wait, the news? Like the guys that are running around naked and stuff? No, no, they're not naked. What are you talking about? Like, Why do you have, have the, to bring it to the. Like, go look, Google Florida. Why does it always man? come down to skin with you? Google, because, uh, hello. Golly, <laughs> my God. Do you not know who's sitting across I from do, you? I do, I do. We're, we're working on you, man. We're working on <clears> you. <throat> no, but like this, you know, just this, like, you know, look, at the end of the day, you've been. In Florida for a long time. Yeah. As of I. And, uh, you know, John, I, how, well, so long story <laughs> short, a lot, a lot of hurricanes we've been uh-huh. through, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Florida stuff, right? Chads, chads, hangers. hanging chads, alligators, <laughs> you know, like, uh, oh my God, we've been through everything. But I embrace all of it. And at the end of the day, we are the, I don't know, I don't know we're the freest freaking state in the union right now. And I'm digging it. No, I get, I get that. But when you're growing up and you don't have that sense of being, that's a different situation. Like you, you, you know, the Northeast has got known for Maryland crab and lobsters and all that. Right? Yeah. And then pizza in New York. Right. Florida, as far as cuisine was concerned no, to me, there was, was nothing. nothing. Right. And that was where the, the dis- disconnect for me was. Now you have Cuban people coffee. like, well, yeah. Uh, hello. Yeah. But crack, you have cracking a cup. <laughs> How many did you have? Right. I mean, we have Michelle Bernstein. You have Alan Susser, Norman Van Aken, Mark Minatello, who's no longer here. He moved up northeast. Those guys. These are he creeps me. He, he he creeps me on uh, on Facebook. Oh, does he? Yeah. Who Minatello? Or, yeah, Minatello. Uh, yeah, yeah. He well, doesn't ever say anything. He there's never a, a like, a, a, a verbit, nothing. But I see that he watches. You know what I mean? Oh, that's that's Mark. Mark. I see you see him. <laughs> well, Norman's right over here in Dr. Phillips. He just opened up his new um, uh, gig over there. Ryan Manning, myself, and a couple of people went and I had think Ver- there. Veronica's talking to them right now. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Norman's Kurt. a great guy. Yeah, um, but that's where I kind of developed that cuisine and that that knowledge of it and the respect. I think that's where I was going with this coming yeah. all back full circle. You have to show respect to the cuisine. And that's what I'm trying to do with everything that we put out and the mashups that I do. 
Well, I'm digging your mashup. And, and speaking of mashup, speaking uh, of you, this guy's a mashup. He's totally a mashup. And I, you know, you know, John gave me this like, uh, hey man, are you gonna, you know, he gave me like the, come on, get him in. He gave in. you the finger. But I'm looking at the thing. We do, we do ten minutes of uh, of, of opening monologue. You know, yeah, but this is this is PK. That's true. You know, I mean, this is the shoe dude. That's right. I mean, <laughs> let me tell you something. You, you people, you're like, yeah, Nike, Jordans. No, 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 no. Forget all that stuff. No, PK. It's the PK. It's the PK with the produce shoes, baby. Um, I just like, I want to welcome our friend, my friend, the Patrick Kelly from the Produce Industry Podcast. You, sir, are my hero. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> great, great to be here as always. <laughs> What's up, baby boy? How you doing? L- living the dream, man. Living the dream as always. Like, yeah. Just real life shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got to get the shoe. Where's my, uh, where's my walk and talk shoes? Ugh. I got to do bacon cartel shoes. Yeah, I right. have some, but I only go through Converse. I got to get well, with your guy. Listen, the produce inspired shoes are, they're kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big like, thing. Not, not kind of, they are a big uh, deal. You know, and you know, I, is it I true? Is it true that somebody got like knocked out? So they get the, uh, so they got the banana shoe. They got the first, the first one in. Yeah. <laughs> first one they, were, they were waiting for it out, out <laughs> the door. No, I mean, you know, you got to look at, I walked into Dick's, what about six months ago and you know, you know, your kids are always telling you what they like, what they don't like. And, you know, I'm in produce, obviously, and, you know, the kid comes running up to me with a Nike shirt that's got bananas and apples and pears, and, and it's got little Nike PLUs on the fruit. Like, they, they got, they like, they, they had some strategic thought, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the shirt, and I'm like, $45. Huh. And, and my son's like, your stuff's way better than that, Dad. Right? And, and I'm like, okay. And it just dawned on me, like, you know, more and more, it's like, why, as an industry, do we not sell merchandise? Go to these trade shows, man, I swear, like, people are like, hey, 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 you want this, you want these? Like, they're they're trying to throw this stuff at you. And it's like, if you look at every other industry that's out there, uh, last time I checked, you went to Jamba Juice, where they, every time you bought a smoothie, they give you a shirt that was hanging on the wall? No. When you bought a pair of Nike shoes, Air Jordans? Yeah, That's right. Jordan sent you a free pair, free another free pair of shoes, didn't he? Oh yeah, uh, right. Wait, no, no, I don't no, 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 I didn't think I so. Yeah, but so I mean, the, the produce inspired shoes really just came from like me wanted to wear some sick shoes to a show, and then now we're five pairs deep. I'm I'm digging it. It's fun. Yeah, and, not- and I don't have to. I mean, Nike came out with dragon fruit inspired shoes this year, and they were just, I think they were like pink. And brown, Nike Bat Neck and New Balance came out with the uh, the the uh, what's that uh, the Kiwi shoe? It was yeah. brown and green. Like how was that like inspired? Right, they, right. they came out with a Tiffany and Co shoe. It oh, was just gosh. that the color blue. That blue. blue. The blue. But I, but you look at that and it's like, yeah, let's come up with something fun, man. Let's have some fun. So yeah, I found a, I found a manufacturer. But people are. But the thing is, people are buying them. Oh my god! I mean, we, chefs. We bought. Remember back in the day when Chef Wear came out, um, they had all the pepper pants and yes, right, mm-hmm. yeah, and mm-hmm. the tomatoes and stuff like that. And then yeah. Mozo. Fast forward, Mozo. You had Aaron Sanchez and uh, Marcus Samuelson came out with their shoes. So you had an egg and then the bacon. So guys were, you know, chefs were buying one, you know, two pairs. One was a bacon, one was the egg, and they would put a bacon and egg on, and so they would go that way. So there's definitely a market for it. Uh, I mean, listen, if you look at how much uh, is spent on marketing for trade shows, right, and people are going and trying to contact all, you know, Nikes and all this, and, you know, all they're doing is going and buying the same shoe, right? Getting everybody to buy the same shoe. Okay, we're all going to get red Chuck Taylors, okay? Red Chuck Taylors, everyone. That's what we're going to get. You know, we're like, why are we going to wear that? Right? You I can guy, have your, when you can have your own shoe. The produce inspired shoe. But I told yeah. him, you know, there was a guy, he reached out to me and he goes, can I please get a rush order on the indie Fruit shoes before this next show coming up? And I was like, yeah, why? He screenshotted the email, like from his marketing department saying what shoes they're wearing and he was like absolutely not i will not be wearing these shoes and like he like wrote her back and then he was like i got the shoes in he sent her a picture and then she was like those are totally approved to wear during the trade show so it was like and, and these are like comfortable and stuff they're right? very they're very comfortable they're very comfortable 
Um, I've got now over, I'm on like 14 pairs of uh, this specific brand shoe. Huh. Yeah, yeah. And all custom made. I've all custom made. Imelda Marcos of the yeah. produce shoes. Right. I, I, no, I'm listen. <laughs> I'm hoping you know what I, I just found this out. I mean, because I have as I was growing up, I never realized this. But I made a joke to my brother. I'm like, man, I'm like the Al Bundy of the produce industry. And my brother goes, oh, only women buy your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. Actually. And in my head, I go, damn. What got, was our, our age bunch. demographic? <laughs> right. What was our age demographic for our show? Ah, twenty. Well, the the largest percentile was twenty five to thirty five. <laughs> All right. So back in the, <laughs> back in the nineties, for most of you, uh, Peg, <laughs> the guy on Modern Family, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy on Modern Family, <laughs> he's got a, a show called Married, Married with, with Children. Children. My right. wife. So funny, funny thing, Jeff. My wife was watching a new show. And I don't know, probably like the last four years. And she's like, hey, you know, babe, who's this blonde girl in my Christine Applegate? And she's like, what an actress. I'm like, yeah, Christine Applegate. And she's like, you know her? I was like, yeah, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. And she's like, I have no idea. Well, who's what babysitter? (laughs) Wow. Wow. Seriously? And then I'm like, babe, anchor man. And she's like, what what about it? I'm like, she, I'm like, I'm like, all right, man. So you had to go back to had to go back like the whole like explaining her Christina Applegate, and she was just like, ah. I mean, who didn't? I mean, from our generation, who didn't have a crush on Christina Applegate? Well, I mean, she, I'm not even in your generation. I had a crush on her. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, back in '87, '88 when I came out. Yeah, somewhere around. I there. think I saw that when I was like 10 in '90. 95 and I was still well, yeah, like the rerun and I'm stuff. still listen look so she gave a new meaning to petty cash everyone okay like <laughs> if you <laughs> well, yeah this is true a, a real a real meaning everyone so what's your favorite fruit oh man oh you asking me on the spot yeah I did that's what and I do listen if I'm gonna choose and it's gonna be a day in day out all, all like or seasonality like how are we talking hmm Attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. Well, in today's world, there I, is no seasonality. So listen, just, you know, you got to choose. At the end of the day, um, I'm a, I eat a banana every day. You got a, what you got there on your on your. Uh, I got a banana. I got a pineapple. Yeah. And, but every day I'm at a banana guy, and then my my go to is always citrus. Um, whether it's a uh, mandarin navel, uh, if there's citrus in the house, it's it, I'm on it. So mm-hmm. I got to tell you, man. And and some people don't like hearing that. And then I go to the avocado next. I can literally half an avocado, throw some salt and pepper on that, and just smack it. Did just so eat it I, down. Uh, let me tell you something. When I was, uh, you know, I was in produce for a million years, right? Um, in the warehouse. You do look a little like Gandalf. A older, older, wise gentleman. Go on. You know what I'm saying? Go on. <laughs> so, um, well, his head just you got know, bigger. You, you, <laughs> what's up? So, and, you know, you would do a, a facility walk, you know, check the coolers mm-hmm. every day and look, you know, just kind of poking around, making sure everything's good. One of the things you do is, is you cut open a couple of avocados, you know, make sure, you know, temp is right. Things are good. Not dark. Black, so there weren't 48. There were 46. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But no, but I used to love just, you know, you open up that avocado right there in the, right there in the warehouse, you squeeze that sucker, you just, and you, and you eat the avocado right there. Yeah. We, we know it was, it was a million years ago. Food safety doesn't allow that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well you know, the thing too about food produce, safety doesn't live in the building. Right? Yeah. The, the yeah. thing about the produce if for chefs and that aspect of it is, and so many people probably don't even realize a lot of people are probably, probably going to have their minds blown. Produce is the only thing dying on your shelf. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Literally dying on your shelf. Yeah, produce is a daily 
a daily driver, man. You're bringing it in every day. Well, and you mentioned, you know, there's no such thing as seasonality. You asked the question about seasonality. I think that's where restaurants are missing is the seasonality of fruit. I think we need to go back to yeah. that. Oh, I agree with there that. Is, there is seasonality. I hate the fact that you're getting peaches from, no offense to Chile, all right? It might be the best peaches in the world, but I don't think we, we should have where... Oh, it's, you know, March, it's coming up for X, Y, Z, you know, or it's the winter, we're going to come up to the root vegetables. I think we need to get back into that. Well, I, I, t- I tell everybody, I said, listen, like when it comes to me, I like being excited about the food that I eat because food is an emotional experience, mm-hmm. right? And so, yeah, I don't eat uh, sometimes peaches from certain countries or uh, citrus during certain periods. Now, if I know it's good, like, listen, I love a California navel. Right. California navel in February, March, April is amazing. I sell citrus for a living, everyone, but I'm not going to lie to you. Like there's a period where it fills a little gap to where it just, it fills the gap on the shelf and normal consumers uh, every day will still eat it day in and day out because they want a piece of citrus. I'm like a citrus connoisseur at this point. Like, I'm like, no, I want a Mandarin at this specific time period. I want a navel at this specific time period. And I want to have that experience. Like when the sumos come out, right. Mm. I, I hope to heck that Sumo's or that Deco Pond Mandarin does not go past a four month season. I don't want it to. I never want to see it grown in Chile. I never want to see it because then now we're going to have to start gassing the fruit. Now we're, you know, right? There's different things that are going to change the quality. So, you know, when you look at those things, like that's why I said, so if seasonality, oh man, a Deco Pond, man, that Mandarin, uh, what is it, February, March, April? That's my favorite piece of fruit of the year. Next, yeah, it's going to be a banana. But then when when uh, Ecuadorian dragon fruit starts coming in, right, the uh, the pink uh, interior pink flesh mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm. I'm switching to that baby, right? So um, you sound like pretty snooty. I mean, this. listen, I, I, I but I tell people, I said when I when I go shopping at the store, I said the best thing about me is is I don't price shop my produce because I want what I want and I want to pay. For what I get, right? So this guy's gangster. If I'm good, you want to you want to you want to pay for it in the, the experience, season. and I want yes, and the season. experience of it. So again, as you see, like I said, like Wish Farms uh, in Lakeland, we we already know. Come this winter time, we're gonna have those pine berries. We're gonna have a Florida strawberries, man. Mm. When you know, mm, <sighs> right? But now when you go over to California, I know Salinas Valley has good berries, right? Driscolls is up there. They've got some great stuff. But I mean, I'm not going to lie. You, listen, in local, the summer, in, oh. in the summer, you take what you can get, uh, n- right? And no, that's, that's I substitute. It listen, I'm like a retailer. I substitute. So I substitute per season. Sometimes, like I just told you, Jeffrey, I, I don't, I won't eat peaches for so many months because I want a leaner, man. When yeah. I bite into that peach, I want to have to lean over oh. that sink because it's oh, dripping exactly, so yep. bad. I don't want to yep. be like, oh. <laughs> another month, it's going to be ripe. Right. Well, then, uh, you know what I mean? Terrible. Yeah. That's, so that's how I feel with nec- nectarines are my favorite. And some people fruit. might hate me for that. Like this other, these other countries. Right. But I think like I said, summer citrus from South Africa is a sponsor of mine. I had no idea like summer citrus. And then all of a sudden I figured out there's a grapefruit you can have over the summer. Right. That's not Californian and it's bright red and it's really freaking good. Right. I'm sorry, Californian. I'm a Californian. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm on the East coast. All the retailers over here, they're not carrying um, pomelos from California or star grapefruit. They're carrying that red, dark ruby grapefruit from South Africa, right? Yeah, but well, star is pretty good, though. It, it is. Star is a suitable alternative for South African. Mm-hmm. Certain part of the year. A certain part of the year. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm, I'm I love the I love the experience, right? I yeah. just I love having a good piece of fruit at the right time, like Jeff. Mm. Chef's perspective. Mm. What's your favorite on the uh, on the fruit? Like, what are you doing? It, it depends. The application for me is mostly man. Um, what do you get excited about? Anything that's in season, to be honest with you. To be really, truly honest, it's it's when it's in season. I'm not in one of those, like we talked about it the last week, uh, the last podcast, tomatoes gassed when they're just green and they gas them. I mean, that's not a flavorful f- profile. No. Those, it's dead. Those, yeah. First of all, there should be no... Other than like um, institutional applications or something like that, like there shouldn't be any gas tomatoes. I can't stand them. No, and I, I guess, it go, and it goes down to like what we're putting in our bodies and how we're getting it. We're not getting the, the full nutrient of what the plant's giving us. 
you know, we, I just planted a whole bunch of vegetables in my garden. I'm getting giddy like a school kid because every day we're seeing new shoots coming up and, you know, I got Jimmy corn in there. We've got onions, we got garlic leeks, Jimmy uh, cracked corn. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, That's where it. it comes from. I don't care. And then we've got, um, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I got beets. We have watermelon radish. So I want, you know, being a farmer advocate, I think the only way to be a farmer advocate is to actually get your hands dirty and realize what it's, what it takes to grow the food that we are eating and not being mass produced. Yeah. You know, it's nothing like going out in your backyard and picking a tomato off the vine and, and popping it in your mouth. And then, like you said, the mm-hmm. juice just Listen, all over the place. Speaking of farms. I was going to say, speaking of that, I actually did that at Wish Farms. They have a little gar. So they have a chef at the facility that cooks lunch for them every day. Wow. Every day. They have a really cool tree house. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's really I cool. Want, I want to go in that I've been house. in the yeah. tree house. I've been, listen, I've been in the pixie room. Ooh. There's a, like, there's a room that's hidden in, in Wish Farms that you have to like somehow find the latch, push the door open. and it's like all a speakeasy. S- it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, listen. I, I it, wish it's, it's I really, could experience Oh, you that. wish. I, and Wish Farms. They, yeah. have a, they have a slide to get from the second story to the first story so you can just go on really? the slide instead of taking the elevator. Is that right? 100%. It's actually on my Instagram page. I write down that thing. No kidding. But speaking, I didn't see of, that. speaking of the uh, farms, speaking of the farms, they grow the produce on site. So the chef will go out and she manages the small little farm that they have. But speaking of the tomatoes, uh, we walked out there and, and Gary Wisniewski was like, check out these tomatoes. We pop a couple of tomatoes right off the vine. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing. Huh. I mean, wasn't maybe, gassed. Do you know what this sounds right? like? Right? <clears throat> like, it sounds like a field trip. To me, well, to me, it sounds like... <laughs> well, you, know, we need you to can bring visit it. my YouTube channel and it's all there. Yeah, it sounds like we need to get involved with this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's right there off I-4. It's you know, right pass there. It, pass it, it every up. freaking day. Yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy. Yeah, that guy. They have those... I know a guy. What are those... Um, White strawberries, like the pine berries. That those are called pine yeah, berries. Pine berries. Good lord, got a little tropical note to it. It's very interesting. It really. Yeah. I mean, my daughter's like they only have so many acres. It's like three hundred acres total. That's it. Yeah. But here's the thing: people think there's the the farming community has to have massive land to do it, and there are a lot of guys that a lot of farmers are doing it in fifteen twenty acres. Yeah, they can. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to have you don't have to have all that land. No, and that's the misconception. I think. Every, yeah, everybody thinks that you got to have a lot to produce. But speaking of farms, if you're listening to this, support Cahaba Clubs, okay? Over out the Marvin, yeah, yeah over at Keystone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check him out. He had some issues with the you know social media and somebody hacked them and lost the whole everything. So <clears throat> you know, check him out, Cahaba Club. dot com. Yeah, check check him out, man. He's um, he's good people. Not only that, his product. Is like insanely delicious. Yeah, this is his time of the year now coming up. Especially he has um, that peanut grass that he was experimenting with, the University of Florida that they developed. Mm -hmm. Good Lord, have mercy. Mm. I mean, that tastes just like a peanut. It's unbelievable. Um, That and his um, wasabi is fantastic. Yeah, my favorite. Totally my favorite. Really? Yeah. I didn't have that. I had you paired for something else. Yeah. What? Well, look at that high-pitched voice right there. Did you hear that? Oh! Right. What, like a buzz button or something? No, not buzz button. I'm just thinking more of the, um, the what is that cilantro he has there with the lime? Cilantro. And lime. Oh, yeah, the, yeah. you're talking about the... Um, the green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you had you more picked for that one. I like that too. He, everything he does is really terrific. Speaking of also farms, uh, we need to figure something out with uh, Amy Yee and, and Jane as well. Oh, City Chicks and uh, the Yee Farms. Yeah. So Amy, um, I reached out to her in Facebook and made sure... Where is my bread? I reached out to her. She said she was going to look at her calendar and tell us a date on Thursday that she can come up. Does she know we're the number one food podcast? Well, she just was on another podcast. podcast, I know. That's what I'm I'm saying. He he keeps mentioning. She know who who we are. She know who I am. (laughs) You know who this is? You know who you is? What is this? Well, you're also BTS. I feel like the low guy on the totem pole here. (laughs) Every time you say that. always me. I'm the low guy in the totem pole. It's always me. I'm just living over here, number 127 over here. <laughs> Bro, well, I feel first, like yeah. Oh, geez, wait, wait, wait. For, let me just let me just explain something, okay? Um, here it comes. Ju- no, here it comes. It just happened on the third. No, I was there. Yeah, <laughs> it just happened. I, and I, it, we we just get John and I just got dudes, dudes, and the next thing, 
we're number one. <laughs> yeah. That was the text. That was the text. Uh, but was, I'm not going to announce it yet the, because I'm waiting for one more thing to come through. The text back would have said, Car- uh, Carl, I know your opinion is very highly <laughs> overrated, but... It is, and it's a crime. But, but uh, I, I didn't go live with it very quickly at first because uh, I, I, I look at three different um, charting systems for Apple, and I waited till all three hit the, like a little trifecta. Because I didn't want to be like, hey, look, it came in as number one. But then somebody's going to look on that one as like, you're an effing liar. I, I like, I like, well, no, I like, we I like all know you're an effing liar. No, I, no, I, like, I like that he thinks that somebody's looking. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I like that he's like, well, you know. Somebody is. I mean, you know, I, I am so it's funny because I, I have my podcast uh, and all the status stuff that I do, too. And I, I follow Walk and Talk. I have the analytics for it as well. And it's so funny because I saw, I saw it in the morning come across and I'm like, all right. Okay. Carl texts me. <laughs> hey, buddy. He's like, guess what? Circle dash. And I'm like, bet. <laughs> like, bet. I don't know. But, it, you know, but it is, it, listen, you know, one, one thing I can tell you, we've talked about this a lot. Like uh, to get on the Apple number one charts, it's, it takes a lot of consistency. It takes a, a lot of marketing, right? It takes like, people don't realize like what it takes to be on there. Like last year, what we, we talked about it, you know, my podcast was top 140 out of 52 weeks. Right. Yeah. And the same thing with yours. And, and when you look at that and how much other podcasts are out there, what people and consumers don't see is they just see there's so many of those little squares in their phone all the time. Right. Right. What they don't realize is, is how many episodes are related to that and how many people are actually listening to that. Right. Yep. So the more you listen, the more these get on the charts, the more it shows up in people's phones. I got a, it's funny because Carl laughs at this Jeff and he's like, cause he does, he says this sometimes I'm not going to say the exact words, but my number ones come from other countries. Right. And, and Carl, and, and Carl sometimes is like, I don't care about that. He does, like, <laughs> I know why you had it. You actually cleaned it up. But, it, <laughs> but we all know, know that he uses word, those four letter words. Yeah. So it was, it was, more, but more or less like, you know, the global show. And I'm like, that's amazing because like, I've been number one in Kenya and I've seen like the downloads comes from our international global series. Right. And the history of fresh produce. when you get number one in those areas and you do, when you get certain, like some of your buddies that'll take that screenshot and when they're over in Nicaragua or where they're over in other countries where you know you're talking and they're screenshot and showing you number one. So it, it is, it's the biggest accomplishment and cheers and proud of the team here for getting that done because that that's one thing that, you know, when we look at how the, these podcasts and audio sources are affecting our industry, there's a lot of people listening and now realizing how the supply chain works and what chefs are doing and what the coolers are doing to be able to make this content come to life. Right. And that part of the other reason I wanted you to come on. And he does care. And yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the genesis of, of walk and talk. It came from out of COVID and, and just trying to help the industry at large, you know, um, amateurs, but, um, <laughs> No, but, but, uh, you know, one of the reasons, yeah, one of the reasons that I, I wanted you to come on today was to talk about our number one status. No, to, to, um, <laughs> kidding. No, Jesus. kidding, dude. He brought 127 over 127, here. That's, you know, I think it might be like 135. That's, that's, listen, first of all, no, we're doing a lot of stuff together. You yeah. Know, no, hundred percent. Produce Industry Podcast, Walk and Talk. We're, we're, we're starting to do things together and, uh, and I just wanted to put it out there. You know, we're. We're, you know, there's a, we're blessed to be in the situation we are in. Same with you. Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. Because the truth is how many, how many, um, names are out there in podcasting, in the food business that the people have the character that we have, like energy, (laughs) character. We're do, see, I was just talking to somebody the other day. We do things different. You do things different. We're doing, it's not just we're sitting in a room and talking. We actually go out and there's cooking happening. What do you mean? We're not in a green screen right now? Yeah. Wait, 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 no, that, the green room was We're not right virtual there. right now? But no. The, we're not virtual? No. Oh, but, I thought we were virtual. See, the <laughs> difference, I think, <laughs> between, right, yeah. between what you're doing on the Produce Energy Podcast and what we're doing on Walk and Talk, what we do together is we go out and physically get out into kitchens. We physically get out into the farms. Yeah, you're 100%. F- we're physically connecting people. We're, d- we're doing. It's not that we sit at home. 
And then we say, oh, I, I hope I get a lot of downloads. I hope somebody on Facebook saw yeah. me or something oh, like that. Like agreed. We're, so we're, we're putting in legwork where the vast majority of podcasters don't. No. And, and again, one out of, uh, like I said, every seven podcasts, uh, they fail, right? New podcasts normally don't make it past episode nine, yeah. right? Because they get to a point where they've spent hours, they've spent money on the equipment, right? And then all of a sudden they've got 37 downloads, right? I mean, it, even myself, I, I, I'm very open and honest with everybody. The first year I was podcasting, I started April 1st, 2020. And I remember the first week I had 23 downloads. I was so happy. Like, I was like, oh my God, 23 people that, I mean, that maybe I do know or don't know listen to this, right? And I think the first year, you know, with doing one episode a week, it was like, okay, 23, 42, 100. And, and people would be like, you know, when I had my first sponsors, they were like, well, when do you, when do you expect your numbers to improve? I'm like, I get happy when I see 101, 102, 103, <laughs> like every one download, like, you know, would make me happy. And then like, I started to realize it's not about the downloads, right? It morphed into something else, right? It morphed into, Hey, COVID's done. Hey, why don't you come visit us at the shed? Oh, okay. What do you mean? Okay. Let's do some on site stuff. But so I agree. I mean, I think being on site, I think a lot of these other podcasts and like uh, the other day you saw this because I tagged you in that post of all the industry podcasts that are out there. You mm -hmm. saw that. Yeah. I named off 15 and I said the first three people that reach out to me, I'll give you, I'll buy your passes to PodFest, which is happening next year in January. I went PodFest. No one reached back out. Really? Not one person. I mean, Carl, Carl, like Carl did. I mean, Carl's all, I've been talking to him about going to PodFest, getting the team up there because it's a great uh, right. source of education, but not one person from our industry reached out. And I, I even said to myself, you need to get on there and make another comment. <laughs> so I did. I made like a comment like, is there no one going to reach out, right? Kind of to, to put the post back in everybody's feed again. And then nobody reached out again. And then I said to myself, I know why they're not though. Because they're not doing it for the industry. They're doing it for themselves. They're doing mm -hmm. it for whatever their selfish need inside their consulting business, right? Their ad agency. Right. Hey, listen, no offense. Like you guys, great. There's 15 podcasts out in the industry, but... If you're not out there being relevant to the industry, how are you helping grow our community and our people, man? It's like that's a hundred percent. And because think of the content, right? When you're when you're when you listen okay, so for me, when I'm listening to a podcast, what I I can't get into or get behind or embrace the monotone one way, like just somebody reading off of a, you know, piece of paper. I, I can't do it. Yeah. I don't want to listen. That's not entertaining. There's been a couple of podcasts he told me to listen to. And I, I immediately text him afterwards and went, I couldn't get past five minutes. And these were mm -hmm. like, these are high ranking shows. I know. Isn't it crazy? Like, and trust me, there's, there's shows that in our, in our world too, cause there's like 80 in the food industry now. Right. You've mm. seen, you've seen them all. And some of these, like, <laughs> I can't even get past the intro music. True story. But like, it's like some of these ones, I'm just like, like Fiverr would have done better for you. Like, how did you do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what is going on? And then like, it, it's, it's crazy. And then like you said, the, I respect the boomer generation about trying to get creative. Right. But starting a podcast and getting on a green screen and, you know, isn't creative, right? It's like, you, you it's, it's more than that. And, and I tell everybody, like, when you look at the walk and talk uh, platform, right? It's, it's a platform. It's not a podcast, right? It's got video. It's got audio, right? It's got your websites, LinkedIn. You've got a lot more than just a podcast, right? And I think a lot of people think, oh, I'll just start a podcast. We'll talk about it. We'll have our friends on. And then they get, and then they get into it and they're like, yeah, I have I have work to do. I got to go sell produce. Right, okay, I, got, yeah, right? I like, have a real job. To they're go like, I can't. Like, I can't just sit around. Like, look, guys, we've been here. You guys have been here longer than me. But just getting into this, we've been here for a couple of hours already. Just talking, planning, eating, looking well, we at work, food. We're, some of us work. Some this, of us have know, a towel over the shoulder. who did nothing. Oh, is that me? <laughs> I was wondering why he had a towel over his shoulder. I'm still wondering why it's on his like, shoulder. I, was, I, 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 this is insane. Look, I don't waste John's paper towel. Oh. I have this. That's what I do. <laughs> but but the, listen, it's the truth. Like a lot of people, they got to be back at the office right now, right? If they're going, and, and trust me, we get this all the time because I have people that are on interviews 
And you know, they'll be like, hey, I got a hard stop at 11. Because they, they might, even some of our guests, right? They have to get back to work. Like, mm-hmm. this is not just, I'm going to start a podcast. Suckers. <laughs> well, I mean, I think, it, when, I think the ones that do well have the passion for it. And it's consistent. I mean, listen, yeah, it's consistency. It's, it's more than passion. Well, it's chemistry. It's, it's passion. It's passion. It's John's it's photography. It's consistency. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a lot. There's, there's a it's lot. It's the it. iceberg model, right? Like, there's so much more. So right, there's only the tip and from on the yeah, top, just, and there's so much below. There's so just much more. Just, just a tip, tip baby. Yeah, just yeah, a I'm tip. pointing at you. Yeah, just a tip. Just a tip. Okay. But now that you came to Ibis Images and saw what goes through, the man to my left, John, that's passion. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful. People I didn't don't know realize when I was walking in. Like, it was like a dark lights. <laughs> are all, it's like the mood. The mood you you didn't like, actually have. Carl was like, "Hey, buddy, come on in." You know, I walk like, in. There's like rolls, lighting going on. All song is on. He's like, "There's like never no, it's seventy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's like three <laughs> dudes Another love over like a one light and a plate a plate of food. And I'm like, no couch. I'm like, wow. <laughs> What's but, going on here? But we realized that we started, I think it was like 10 o'clock when we started. You got here at a little after 1230. We were just finishing the last plate. And I want to remind everyone, food does not move. No, no it doesn't. It doesn't. Once it's dead and it's on the plate, it ain't moving. No, no, no. It's, it's so, so, I mean, that's the, a credit to him. and the Move it to my mouth. <laughs> well, and your belly. From my belly. In my BTS. belly. By the way, how is the BTS today? Ah. <sighs> By the way, BTS, so Patrick, if you know, that is uh, an acronym that one of our loyal listeners, Amy Yee, came up with. It was supposed to be behind the scenes, but now it's known as Big Tummy Tummy. Status. Yeah, Big Tummy Status. (laughs) Amy Yee in the house. Well, Amy, I don't have the privilege of having that uh, BTS. So, so what, I, what I did is I, I posted a, uh, uh, some behind the scenes uh, stuff last week. Was your big tummy in it? No. no, no. I just put BTS because it's, you know, most people know BTS and I get some. That's a Korean group, right? Yeah, right. The boy band? Right. So I get a side note. She's like, hey, what's uh, what's BTS? Big, big tummy status? And she, and she, cause she didn't know, but she said a funny, she goes, big tummy status. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's brilliant. <laughs> that, that is brilliant. So no, you know, but on the contrary, yes, <laughs> hmm. yes. So, Pooch, I just want to. I want to. I want to bring up uh, Big Pooch Rivera. You got to bring up a couple of things. You got October twenty third. You got November twelfth and November. This guy, and you're on the list too. Patrick. March seventh. No, no, no. Wait, For, hold on. forget his March seventh or something. <laughs> forget our, my March seventh. Yeah, you can't um, forget his March seventh. It's no. been great being here, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> Uh, October 23rd, we are having a walk and talk bash over at Sally Mar uh, rooftop bar in their private banquet room on the balcony. That's what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be chefs. It's going to be right now. Seventeen influencers. 17 chefs right now. Yeah. Food influencers. Um, distributors, all sorts of cool people from the industry. And we're going to eat. We're going to have cocktails going to be. Badass. Am I on the VIP list? Yeah, yep. you are on the VIP list. Oh, yeah. I just get back from California. So well, well, I, don't, I don't care where you we are. Actually have but a, that's where you're going to be. I'm just getting back. So Three farmers is, are going to be there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got to look for the fourth one. Well, Vicky you know how many it. after I come, right? Well, there are three. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Pooch, I want to well, get back to Big Pooch. Um, I had a, like an hour conversation with him uh, a couple of days ago. And he were so he we're given the we're given uh Pooch Rivera from Louisiana. He's gonna get a ten minute segment every month. And he is going to be the Creole ambassador to the world on our program. He's got a pretty nice um he's got a his, you know, um repertoire. Repertoire, uh yeah, like he was on Nat Geo, he was on a bunch of shows. He's a serious guy. That's how I met him. Right. Yeah. He was with his producer. Right. So anyway, he's so he's gonna we're he's gonna we're gonna do a segment with him, and he's gonna go through the history of Louisiana culinary in Louisiana. So and it's pretty deep because you have the you know French influence, Italian influence, African American influence. You know through the you know through all the different periods of time. I am so excited about this because it's coming from a chef. He's a chef by trade, coming from a chef's perspective. It's going to be freaking badass. Well, we not only just don't have just Pooch, we have so many others well, that are going to yeah, be lining up. He's just, yeah, he's just he's going to be just, the kickoff. He just happens to be the, yeah, he's yeah. kicking off. But there's another, what, I don't know, five, six, oh, 
Uh, I think we're back up to six now. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. got we got Manny, LJ, Jason, Pooch. These are, these are all chefs, right? So, got it. And and each chef comes from a different region of the country, and they're going to really focus in on that particular region. And yeah, it, it's going to be freaking cool. But anyway, Pooch is also going to be meeting us out over at the w. World Food Championship. Uh, that's November eighth uh, to the twelfth or whatever. So um, that's going to be fu- that's going to be so much fire. That's going to be so much fire. I was real like you know Mark Conway. He's like, hey, you want to be a, a master judge over at the you know World Food? I'm like, you know why he asked that, right? I'm like, yeah. Why? Don't you look down. You can. <laughs> You're professional. <laughs> That's what she said. I am a pro- talk about your BTS. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you can't see it anymore. Anyway, anyway so <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know, um, I wear this with uh, pride. With pride, yes, and, you know, we know. Yeah, I gotta go to the doctor. And I have to go with him because I'm the excuse. Right. Yeah. It's your fault. <laughs> See? Yeah. You know, I was totally, I was, you know, I was, I don't know, 200, uh, yeah, 195. Jeff, I told him, I said, 50% of your plate needs to be greens. He goes, what does that mean? <laughs> you mean green sauce? <laughs> green, <laughs> pesto? <laughs> Jimmy Churry? <laughs> pesto, pesto, pesto works, man. Pesto's okay yeah. for you? Yeah, that okay. works for me. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure. You, you know, you got to do a good pesto. I do. Yeah. He, did did no. you want me to make it? I'm t- Not now. No, he's got BTS. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. No. Wow. <laughs> I'm just going to make up. A, when, when we have the place, when we get the house, I'm going to make a, a, a sauce or a, a rub that's going to be called BTS. Yeah. <laughs> The BT, the and B- he's going to be uh, fattening yeah. as hell. Yeah. Maybe it'll be foie gras. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wow. Um, Served anyways, with sour so, sour bread. Yeah. Uh, there's so many. There's so much to eat. You know what I mean? Like so many things that we got to get into, man. <laughs> like I, I, you know, just keep feeding me and feeding me. Oh my god. All right. Um, so yes. Did you want to talk about uh, March seventh? I mean, I, I guess we can. <laughs> it's like, kind of a bit, it's kind of a big deal, isn't it? I mean, it's it's a the first in person event that I'm hosting, so it's kind of a big deal. Let me just let me before he gets you into want, this. You want, you maybe, maybe wait, wait, you let me let me be. Let, hold on, I'm going to be flavor flavor for a second. Oh, okay. Where's your clock? I, I'm wearing a. a the, oh, he's the, wearing the, this. I got this. He's got the. He's got the kitchen rag yeah. on his shoulder. Yeah, boy. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna say so, what we called that back in that rag back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So shoemaker. Um, okay. Let's t- silence. All right. So what he's putting on, what he is creating right now, the experience is nothing short of abject, absolute bad assery. Okay. Um, you know. I will tell you something. This guy, I wish I had a tenth of the energy that he's got. Stop eating beef. <laughs> no, I won't do that. That's not worth it for me. Go to hell. Energy, go to hell. <laughs> he's to hell. not willing to put the work in. I'm not willing to do that. No. No. Fine. But, Change is hard, man. You know what? I was trying to be, you know, I was trying to like uh, to pump you up because it's, it's all great stuff, man. Man, go ahead. No, I, no, I appreciate hey, it. Hey, what's your thing on March 7th, man? Hey, what's uh-huh. the, mar- hey, uh, can you give us uh, an overview, please? Go ahead. Where's the spreadsheet? Uh, no. So, no I, mean, I got a hard cut up, hard cut off. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hard stop at eleven, guys. <laughs> if we if we could be done, we get get this out of the way. Um, no, the March seventh, you know, it was it was about a year in the making. So we did the Southeast Produce Council's Southern Exposure in Tan. No, in Orlando. That was what March of twenty twenty two. We all kind of went out to that. Yeah. Was it, it this it, past year? Yeah. Was, God, was that already a year? It was this year, right? It was yeah, it? I thought this yeah. year, right? It was more, yeah, 22, yeah, 23. You're right. It was 23. You're right. You'll see. It's already been that long. Yeah. yeah. So that was March. It's almost been a year. But before that, we were, I remember we were sitting uh, in Tennessee and uh, someone came up to me and we were in a networking event and they said, you know, when are you going to put something live on? And I was like, I do live streams all the time. <laughs> like, hey, what's happening? And they're like, no, you should, you should do something. And I said, yeah, you're probably going to. So I kind of started like 
touching base with some of the sponsors and was like, hey, if we're not going to be in Orlando next year, right? Like, what do you think about hosting this event? And then, boom, it was in Orlando again. We were like, well, yeah, there, wah, wah, there wah, goes wah. that. Well, previous to that, they were like, hey, we're not going to be at the Dolphin and Swan next year. And I was like, what? Where are you guys going to be? And they were like, we haven't announced it yet. So in the making of that, I I had this weird feeling that it was Tampa. Because Tampa was in 2020, and that was the last trade show. It was like March 4th or something like that, right before COVID, right? right. So it was the last trade show. So that was 2020. So I'm like, man. And then they said, boom, right after it's announced in Tampa, right? And I made a call to uh, Mary Heslip at 10 Acre Marketing, and I said, there's no way we can't do something. And obviously, previous 2022, I was already talking to people about an in-person event, right? And so I reached out to three to five sponsors, and I was like, I got this idea. Um, Tampa, home hometown for the podcast. You know, that's where I live. And they're like, what, you know, Mary was like, what are you thinking? And I was like, I have no idea. She's like, maybe we rent a boat or something, right? We just started us, and then all of a sudden, Mary's like, I got an idea. She's like, let's get rent a yacht. And I'm like, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> and she's like, no, tr- you know, you know, trust me. So um, between March of 2023 and uh, I would say August, say August 30th, uh, we plan this out, pull the trigger. So we are going to have an exclusive inaugural in-person event at Tam- in Tampa Bay. March 7th, 2024 at, you know, before SEPC's event, Southern Exposure, which is, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, how it usually is. And uh, we are renting the Starship yacht. We're going to be able to have about 113 people on the boat. It's going to be, like I said, an exclusive invite only ship. Yeah, it is a ship. Yeah, it's a yacht. You know, I'm going to pull, uh, what, what was it? You remember Vince Vaughn every time someone said, well, your boat in, uh, you remember in, um, Starsky and Hutch, he was like, how's your boat? He's like, it's a yacht. <laughs> um, so my, the yacht, um, so yeah, so we're going to have, you know, retailers, wholesalers, we're going to have all of the, our group right here, all the walk and talk team. We're going to have a celebrity guest. We've got some cool autographs already signed for, you know, to give away to some of the people we've got a very, cool Patrick Kelly inspired, uh, you know, meal plan that we have. Um, and you know, we're going to make it an event. So you're going to be beef on this thing. There, you know, <laughs> there is no, you're walking on the boat. There. I, beef. I mean, uh, there's no beef. There's actually no beef. All right, I have a special, uh, uh, I have a special dietary need. Yeah. I need beef. beef. Yep. You can eat before you get on. Um, <laughs> wow. All right. Well, you know, he, he'll, he won't, he'll bring up, uh, uh, attache filled no, like, no food like, like a metal no, where no like, it's like the football it will have no, all it'll, containers it'll, it'll be it'll no be food just, or drinks no it'll be like bento a, boxes a whole <laughs> no it'll be like a whole suitcase of strip steaks yeah just, you know, just stacked on each well, other well we got bacon so we're good we got oh, pork oh, okay. I know, okay. I know, yeah, no, got, no, no. hey bacon hey, good we got we got well we have bento boxes we got it covered we do remember last year when we did savor savor we do have bento boxes hmm Hmm. No beef though for you. No beef. No beef for you. No beef for you. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun, man. We're all of us. It's going to be a great time. We're celebrating the podcast. We've done. We're going on next year. will be four years. Our four year anniversary. And again, celebrating all the community. Right, bringing the community together. And right here in Tampa Bay. I mean. Why not, right? So we're going to be doing some video with you, right? We got some sizzle reel stuff to do. Like we got a lot of like we got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, man. You're gonna listen. We're gonna meet everybody. We're gonna have a lot of fun this year. I've got some sponsors that are coming back for you know another year. We did some cool videos this year with you know Hawaii Produce and their onions, Arctic apples uh, with their apples. That and, was Thomas uh, Parker. Yeah, yeah Thomas that. Parker did that, mm-hmm. and, and that was great, man. I mean, th- those are the things. Like I said, we're gonna build that community, show people what we what we're doing, and. uh you know, just try to grow this industry together. And I think I think more of your sponsors should get involved with chefs doing things because, uh, hello, who else uses well, that, the product? That's, that's, that's I know that's, he's the conduit, but I'm no, saying what we're working I'm on. saying yeah. to this now, yeah. the, and then sponsors we're working learning. on it, right? There, it's, it's crazy to say that Carl and I have had a lot of talks with, with sponsors, right? And uh-huh. it's crazy how many of them it, do not do consumer marketing. Like, 
They don't you, get it. They don't. They, no, it's not that they don't get it. It's just their budgets have always been aligned that way. I mean, listen, I'm going to call out Zespri right now. We, I feel we, like I feel like they don't get it. We pitched Zespri many times on a podcast sponsorship. Do you want to know? Listen, Zespri, I love you, but I'm going to tell, tell you the truth, right? But it's like Zespri spends a lot of their money on clipping coupons. They Why? do. Why? Um, that that's just their strategy. So, but their thing is then they're they're. The value. You, you've noticed this. If you walk into any grocery store, Walmarts, anything, Publixes, and go to where the, the Zespri Kiwis are, there's always like a dollar coupon right off it, or it's right on the package. So they invest a lot of that marketing in the consumer, like hand to hand, in person marketing. And listen, like, all I, they need to do is like a QR code. Trust it's me. one stupid thing, and you print it on the box, whatever, listen, and that's it. I'm done. totally with you, but oh, that's God. what I'm saying. So, they're, so it's, not, it's a Kiwi, is their product? Zespri Golden Kiwis or Zespri, you know, the regular Kiwis, but. Like, like I said, but those are things like you, I agree. Like, it's not that they don't get it yet. It's just some of that old school mentality is like, it's like, if it, if it ain't fixed, if it, it ain't broke, broken, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. And that's what they've been doing. You but know? you know, back in 1985, Blockbuster thought the same thing. No, it's when my mom Listen, used to and, and, that's, and that's why I think, and that's why I think too, that the reason why walk and talk is, is as popular as it is too is because like people are seeing and listening. Like you said, people are listening. And I see the same thing when we go look at that. We went to that show. It was funny. Is actually this, this right rewind at two seconds. I, I was someone texted me and they kept texting me and I was like, well, "Who's texting me?" So I took a picture of all of us. I sent it. The guy wrote back. And says, "Tell Carl what's up." And I'm like, "This guy knows Carl. <laughs> Who was it? Right at John Pap, Jack. Oh, Pap. Yeah, okay. but yeah, still. Yeah. But you know what I mean. It's like it's we're building like this community that we're building. It's like no, they're watching. People are listening. They're Can understanding. Can it be cafe? Right. <laughs> Oh, can it, can it be Road? Canopy Road Cafe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That we, we sat down for breakfast and they were trying to figure out who we were. Who? Where? What was that? It was a breakfast joint over oh, really? off of Falkenberg. Yeah. yeah. And just like I said, it's just, I think that's why we're becoming, I, I we really are becoming believe, more popular. And, I really believe, and I don't mean this because, you know, obviously, we're, I, I feel like what, what you're doing and I feel like what, what, what Walk and Talk is doing, I feel like we're like the hottest things out there. You know, and it does, not everything represents that. It isn't yeah, like, baby. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's not like you, it's not like dump trucks of cash or you know getting dumped no. on the front yard. But I, but I, do, people are paying attention. Yeah, they, I, I, they I mean, are. I don't. Some of the things that people sell, say to me, like some someone coined me, coined me like the official voice of the produce industry, or they're saying you, that you have so much passion for this industry, and and at the end of the day, like. I just say, as funny as it sounds, I'm like, no, I'm like, no one just doing it the way that I see it. Right. And there's a lot of people out there making videos and I cringe when I see them sometimes. I'm like, whoa, but Dude, then, I, can, oh, right. Oh. But then, I, but then you're right. That's why I tell people, I go, I'm nothing special. I said, it's just, I do have a passion for produce and I have a hell of a good time doing this. And that's what sets the difference because Wait a 90% whoa, whoa, of these people whoa. have jobs. Whoa, whoa, Patrick Kelly, PK, you are special, man. Hey. <laughs> You are special. That's what the reading rainbow used to tell me. Reading rainbow. Getting <laughs> yeah. yeah. back to the one we vendor ourselves. that you were calling out with the kiwi, what they don't realize. They're great people too, by no, the way. And I'm, I'm not saying if they're bad or good, whatever, and different. Here's the thing. If they got to, and hooked themselves up with a chef, to me, kiwis, there's only one thing to do. Eat it. And that's pretty much it. You know, to take the skin off and eat it. But if you get to be. You can actually eat it with the skin on. True. Yes. I understand that. But most people, their persona you is. You scoop them. You scoop it yeah, out. You know, and you're, you're right. But no, if, if you get with a chef and they have that passion for a kiwi, then there's recipes that co- correspond with it. Then it's an availability to then sell more. No, of course. I mean, look at, look at, look at Sun Pacific. Sun Pacific runs the uh, cuties, right? Mm-hmm. What's their kiwi brand? Oh, the zipper fruit. Mighty's. Oh yeah, the, oh, right? Right, the right, that, right. that's the same company, right? That's the Sun Pacific. I, but I call it zipper fruit because you just rip yeah, it open with your fingers. But I'm just saying, it's like you look at that. It, you will never see Mighty's being marketed. All they have to do is is market cuties, right? And, right. And people people will, will make the correlation. I think that you know some of these companies that don't see digital transformation as a plus yet. And I'm going to be real and calling some media companies out, but some of these media companies don't give the impression, don't give the data and analytics back, or they're hiding it and saying, oh, well, you know, you, you didn't sign to get that deal. Like, listen, at the end of the day, digital transformation has to be transparent. So again, like Carl and I, we produced these two videos with the team here, right? For mm-hmm. uh, With Chef Thomas Parker. We went back and gave them the data and analytics. Hey, here's your views. Here's what we have. 
Here's how it's performing, right? Here's, look, we posted on LinkedIn. We shared it here. Here's the impressions and likes and videos here. Like we compile that. A lot of the media companies that are out there that are offering digital transformation and, and charging people a hundred to $200,000 a year in contracts. Uh And then all of a sudden, you know, Jeff, you're coming back saying, how did my um, ad for December go during the pecan season? And then go, Oh, let's check on that. Or they just, it's not in your contract. So you're never going to get any of that. They don't give it up. They don't give it. And and that's where I told, um, you know, someone called me a week or two ago and said, your competitor is stating this. And I said, ask them, and Carl, you know some of these questions. I'll be like, ask them their top you know, position in these countries. Ask them what their download rate is or here. Ask them what their metrics is on their click-through rate through this, this, and this. And then they'll come back and say, oh, well, they said they're not going to share that. I go, I know, because I have their analytics at zero. Like, right? Like, uh-huh. pe- pe- People don't realize like, they, that proof, that data is actually what you need. So the more, if Zespri was to take it on, right? Mm-hmm. They invest that with us this year, right? We're going to bring them data and analytics that's going to show them exactly what you just talked about, right? Mm-hmm. They're not getting that from the other the, the big multi million dollar company. So why are they going to give it to me or Carl, right? Right. Because they're just going to say, well, we're going to keep giving the you know this to this, and we're going to keep it here. We're going to stay with. Pre- how in the world, Carl or Jeff? How in the world are you surviving on just? print advertisements because i'm gonna tell you one thing that big old packet i get in the mail every single day goes right into my recycle bin i mean you're helping with recycling i am thank you very much yeah. i want to just yeah. sustainability is a big key for me everyone right. yep. thank you very much it should be i just do my part Duh. But, it's, but right so I, I think you know digital transformation is going to change a lot and i think uh, as we keep growing i think that's why we become more popular too is because we're showing people how they're going to get their reach, not how Carl Fiadini is going to get the reach, how Chef Thomas Parker is getting the reach, how Peninsula Foods is getting the reach, how Arctic Apples is getting the reach. Yeah. No one thinks, I care about Carl. I care about I, Patrick. I, thank you. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I care about them in our community more, right? Because the more they bring on and sell and do, the more we get back. I, I subscribe to the, you know, um, if something happens in alt- altitude and you put the oxygen on yourself first and then you go and help others. I subscribe to that. But I do embrace everyone's other, their needs have yeah. to be met. You know, but everybody wants an ROI in, in this particular genre. And there's no such thing as an ROI with this unless you're doing hard sales if yeah, not exactly you're branding yeah. and branding there's a cost of branding and, and exposure one. yeah no, so 100 people, people well your roi after. the roi in this is going to take longer to see than than it would be in other maybe venues because maybe, 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 though, maybe right maybe though it depends how on many, how you do hold it. on listen guys how many videos do you personally do you watch on youtube and you don't like and you don't comment and you don't do anything you watch it and you're like huh that's really good. And you move on. I'm guilty of that. I'm not. I am. And I'm, I've been better. Now I try to be a little cognizant and I, nice and yeah. I try to hit a like button or something like if that. If I truly enjoy it, like if I watch the full 15 seconds of it on a short, oh yeah, now because I know where I am in my yeah. digital relationship. But most people are not. <laughs> right? Most people yeah. are not content creators. So yeah, most people true. pass it by. They will. They'll do, my kids, and they by swipe the way, up, right? This is, a great, this is a great little segue into, I wanted to get into something real quick. Um, uh, Chef Greg Ritchie from SoCo over in Orlando. Um, he's one of our newest uh, restaurant recipes uh, chefs, culinary partner chefs. And uh, in the last, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks, he, his content that we posted out there, put up uh, his video series, uh, is upwards of 50,000 um, views. That's Ooh, awesome. Yeah. That, that's amazing. Yeah. On YouTube, yeah. I get happy when I get two. Me too. Everyone counts. Every single one counts. And when there's, you know, I, multiple you, thousands remember, of them, it's, it's really I've good interrupted thing. this, but do you remember <laughs> that one? I remember when Carl first started the podcast and he told me one time, he goes, he, I remember one of your podcasts, I got like 97, you know, listens, but yeah. they listened like the whole way through. And I said, and Carl was like, he was bummed a little bit. And I said, just remember, I said, if that was a premiere movie, you just had 97 people waiting in line. 97 people just sat in your theater 
and watched an hour and 15 minutes of your show, I go, I'd be pretty darn happy if I were you. And, and I think that's, as you're alluding to, right? It's yeah. like, it's perspective. It's totally because at the end of the day, if every movie premiere, right? They're showing up and they want to get a huge audience for a movie premiere, right? Yeah. But then once that one movie premiere is done, then it goes out to how many times it hits the theaters and everything like that. But just remember at the end of the day, it's like you're getting a selective audience. And when you get to that four or 5,000 a day download, you're sitting there going, that's an audience now that's taking time to sit or watch like a movie, like a movie premiere, man. Listen, or a, I told, or a release. I think it might've been, well, there were several people in the very beginning that said, ah, oh, Carl, you know, do a podcast, you know? And I originally told those people like, no, you're a dummy. Like I, it's stupid. There's no, why would I do that when there's video, you know? And I didn't know any better because I wasn't listening to podcasts. So what do I know? But as it turns out, what we're doing here is the driver now for everything walk and talk media. And it's amazing. Um, you know, and, and listen, and like being on, being on Patrick's show in the very beginning a couple of times and um, Chef Roberto uh, Trevino, Trevino uh, his podcast and stuff. And I was like, man, that's really cool. And I would ask, you know, Hey, what, what were the, uh, what were the, you know, downloads, whatever. And it was always very impressive. So now I'm, I'm so happy that we got into this and we were a little bit fortunate, you know, we we're a little bit blessed because, you know, we had the, you know, um, our video series, we've been doing that for years. Right. So we, we had a little bit of a following. So the transition into, into podcasts was pretty good. Like we're, you know, we're close to, um, I don't know, about 800,000 downloads right now. And I think there's an opportunity to hit a million this October will be one year. This mm -hmm. this month is a year. Yep. Are you kidding me? I told you. I told you do it faster than I did. I told you. Well, that. we had a little bit of a following. Like I looked at because I remember when you started your podcast. We didn't know there each was other. No, and there was no uh, dude. I there was no following. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no. Listen, when I you started your podcast, <laughs> when I started uh, my YouTube channel, yes, I didn't know you. Yes, but correct. I remember seeing you. I was in produce for crying out loud. I remember yeah. seeing you. I was like, the hell is this? You know. And within about a month or two of each other is when we started our independently yeah. start, started on this, this content. Uh, Jay world. introduced us. Yeah. Jay. Jay, uh, Gardner, Jay Gardner. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Citrus America. So, uh, you know, in, in that his growth over that time has really just been like exponentially. Yeah. Not a, well, I don't want to say exponential. I'm saying solid, mm -hmm. solid rock solid because the people that are following him are serious about following him. And I, and I, and that's a testament to what he's doing. You've seen it too. We've been yeah. to some, we've been to the shows, right? But yeah. it, it is true. I mean, I always say like, I, I think the second million is going to come faster than the first million. I think yeah. it took me a while. I'm at, I mean, I'm at one point, one point four, four or five. Right. So it's not bad. I mean, we average, uh, I mean, this is what you got to look at. If you, I mean, you guys are looking at the growth right there. I mean, look at that. Look at the flat line. I mean, that was that first year that I was telling you, see that 23 downloads. Right. But it took, and then all of a sudden, like, Boom. It just, it exploded. So, and, and again, what, what I always think about is like, you're, you're always not going to go up, right? You're going to go up. You're going to go down. You're, mm -hmm. you're going to go, you know, you know, you know, everything in between. So it took me what, you know, to get a million downloads, it took me almost three years. And now it's, you know, I, that million downloads, I think it was like April, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It was, it was, and, uh, and we're at 1.45 million right now. So, right. you know, now we're averaging, you know, a uh, couple hundred thousand almost a quarter now how it's just grown. Right. And that, and that speaks to in this genre, in the podcast world, these numbers are sick. Oh, sick. these are, these are insane sick. numbers in the, and especially for niches, like for niches, like that's the crazy thing about it for niches. It's, it's amazing because most people want to listen to crime. Most yeah. people want to listen right. to Ben Shapiro. Like yeah. most people want to listen to celebrities. Most people, you know what I mean? Like the Joe the, Rogan and all that. Right. Yeah. And, and again, like even my podcast, like the guys, what we're doing right here is completely off the cusp. A lot of times, like I'm in interviewing CEOs. I mean, I'm interviewing people that are like, Oh yeah. No, like you're, you're crazy different. Right? Your, your platform style and what we're doing. Com completely. Oh, my Monday show. Yeah. My Monday show is completely different. It is legitimately like I will get the CEO from this company and, and they'll want to come on and talk about their supply chain or what food they produce or what grower. Like I have this one lady, 
we had her on. They grow like 70 different types of produce in Canada, like throughout Canada, right? Like it's crazy. And all they wanted to talk about is how they service the school systems all throughout Canada on a lot of their local produce. That's amazing to me, right? And then the Friday shows, Dan will tell you what's fresh from the fields, right? So it's like, then sometimes Dan will just ramble off for 15 minutes on hey rhubarb is coming up everybody do you have rhubarb you can do this this no, you know no, what no, i mean you're, it's, it's, right, yeah. it's, you're like rhubarb is coming up like he's got that he's got like he's that, got that voice yeah you, you know have you ever met dan dan's like like six six too he's like a, he, he's got a, he's got the radio no voice. it is the well everybody uh welcome back like he's yeah. got he's got it but no it's true and i think that you know everybody you know listens i have some diehard followers that if I, my podcast doesn't post on monday <laughs> Like 9.30 a.m., they're like, hey, drove to work this morning. Your podcast wasn't up. And I was like, and I'm okay? like. <laughs> yeah, and, we get that, too. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, Spotify didn't upload it today. You know what I mean? I'm sitting there in the background like. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I get I get Wednesdays. So what's the topic? I'm like, I'm wondering, too. That's a great. <laughs> I'm waiting for my text. No, no it's, <laughs> it's so true. But Bri- Brian Kilman, that's the one that does that. He will, he'll send me a message He's on Wednesday. I get, I get a little messenger on Facebook and, hey, what's the podcast uh, topic this week? And I'm like, I have no yeah, idea. I, do, uh, so I think I've said it so many times now. He doesn't ask now. And now it's just like, it's a crapshoot. It's like Russian roulette. Listen, there's going to come a time. I promise there will come a time when we are going to be so far ahead on content. <laughs> Don't shake your head at me. <laughs> Don't you shake your head at me. You know, let me let me explain that. Like, uh, listen, my pad one. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me let me let me let me give you some advice from a you know a four year old here. Okay. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, oh you. Uh, you know, I told someone this the other day. They said they go. You know, what happens if you get rid of the podcast? I said you'll never know. And I said, what do you mean? I said, I got 190 YouTube videos. I said, I go, I can produce all that into audio. I said, and you'll never know. I can quit tomorrow. I go, and I'll have, you know, episodes produced for 192 weeks, 192 weeks. But, but as a backup, right? Like if you were to say like right now, I had a gentleman, CEO of Grub Market. He uh, canceled with me, had to go out of, out of uh, country. Boom. I literally grabbed the Shelby report that was sitting on my desk and I saw the first tab and it said H E B reclaims top grocery spot. I pressed record and I read this article for like five to seven minutes. It's like, boom. Yeah, no, no, no. And that, that one posted, like I did that on Thursday, posted on Monday. So you're not going to keep thinking that big guy. You huh. Keep thinking that. I don't know. I, I, I think Listen, I'm, I'm going you're to allowed aspire to, think. to it. I'm aiming high to be more organized in the approach here. I'm aiming high, but not for that high. Relevancy. Yeah, well, yeah. You told me relevancy early. The thing you know about, here's the thing. The thing you know what I've noticed? Is relevancy. I've noticed something. I'm starting to breathe like Tony Soprano <laughs> when I talk. I'm like... BTS. Oof, I my will God. never have that problem. Oh, my God. No, yeah. he actually is going to have that dicky do problem. Yeah. Uh, well, you know... Yeah. The meat, the meat <clears throat> stroking off. The meat sweats. <laughs> here's the thing. <clears throat> there are two people on the team that <laughs> want to get more structure uh-huh. and we use mine uh, like whiteboards and we want to use yeah. calendars yeah. we do that too all right really and who john who in this room doesn't do that carl i'm looking at you john i'm looking is we're carl, both looking at I'm you i'm looking at you we, i, I whoa, 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 what is this an intervention no wait yeah. whoa hold on a second i am not ready for an intervention <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I am not gonna we're go. not doing a food intervention i am not going you know what we should do this cucumber i got it i have the idea this is perfect we put him on a limit until he gets structured. No, so no food. No food. Oh, we, you can't he's only allowed food. tastes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Wait a second. Hold on. Not full blown meals. I like where this only is going. tastes until um. you get more organized. <laughs> I was the one. Well, that just... everyone, that's our show. Well, that's that's a wrap. <laughs> John, John, when did when did you that's find out that somebody was coming today? Today. <laughs> Listen, I am the. I am like no, the, no, no, no. The it's special it's even worse. It was even worse. It oh was my God. ding dong, and John goes, "Who's here?" 
You know, John, I was wondering because oh when God. Carl said, I, wow. go, I, I go, I can't come tomorrow for this reason. He goes, oh, okay. Then I said, I can come. I sent me the address. At like 9 o'clock, he goes, yeah, okay, but his address is in my car. I was like... I don't that, know it by my heart. I was like, don't people keep addresses in their phones nowadays? All like, right. So, no, I have two different. I have my phone GPS and then I have the, nat, you know, the one that's native to the car, right? You're so a, I, always use, I always use the one he, he that's is, in a car. He's a Gen X. I, I, really? What do you mean? What is wrong with How do you? you? Use, your phone I have goes CarPlay. everywhere. Your no, no, phone? No, but I have, I have, hold on, hold on. I don't want to hear I, this. When you have CarPlay. This is hurting my brain. Shut up. Well, I have, I have plug in. CarPlay, okay. Yeah, plug it in, what plug happens it in. with the silence? <laughs> what happens with the plug-in CarPlay is the uh, the little the the, hickey. the node starts to not work anymore. So what I do because I want to be able to use my phone uh, at stops, uh, red lights, and stuff. Um, <laughs> I want to be able to, to, you know, whatever license plate number G four. <laughs> so what I what I do is I use my in dash. You know, GPS yeah. for stuff that's already that I go to a lot. So I just hit the thing, you know, recent and that's it. You don't remember where places are? I know how to get here. Oh, okay, just checking. But for you, I don't have the freaking address off the top of my head, you know? All right. All and right. I wasn't going to go out to the car. I know it's numbers and it's off of a G road and that's it. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a. That, that was, we're done. We're so done. <laughs> that that look, right? You just got from John. What about the looks I'm giving to all of you? I got daggers. Everybody, <laughs> stay tuned next week as we talk about the whiteboard. Uh, collective studies on Free how form. to get more about, organized. Talk, and, talk, talk about Gen X and why you talking whiteboards and stuff. You know? Yeah, Gen X doesn't do whiteboards. He needs a yellow legal pad. <laughs> I prefer it. Little spiral notebook, spiral. Up, the, uh, like dragnet. No, yeah. like the, the black That's and exactly white. Yeah. He needs. The so, compass, the, com- the composition, composition book. Composition. Composition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, my daughter still uses one of those in school. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, oh just, my just gosh. shoot me. All right. Patrick's um, always great seeing you, bro. Yeah, yeah no, man. Like, great, great to be here. I appreciate, great to be in the appreciate you coming out here, you non beef eating son of a. My non beef eating less self. You dirty. All right. Um, Patrick, John, you over there. <laughs> We are out. <laughs> <laughs>